It's got nothing to do with containment, a new Cold War, anything like that. It's simply a matter of keeping, uh, living up to the responsibilities that on both sides we've, uh, we've undertaken. For example, us extending the BNO passport holder um, offer to come to the UK in the way I described is not contingent on uh, a free trade deal or anything like that. Um, we wouldn't allow that to, be, to get in the way of us doing our, uh, living up to our responsibilities as a matter of principle. Um, and I think uh, both for moral reasons and uh, national standing, that's really important, international standing. We're not turning our back uh, on the people of Hong Kong. But I do think it's right to work with our international partners to give China the breathing space, if you like, to have a look at this and to see actually whether it's the right move, um, and to work with our international partners about what we do next. Equally, we recognise China's a, a, a large power, a rising economic power, um, and is a leading member of the international community. I think the, the thing which will take the shine, if you like, off that rise, uh, not just the economic impact of COVID-19, but also if it cannot live up to the deals that it makes. It comes down to an issue of trust. Some people say that the coronavirus pandemic has intensified tension between China and the US, potentially even creating the climate for a new Cold War. Do you agree with that? Well, I think, there were, as you said, there were tensions before coronavirus. I think there are questions to be asked about how coronavirus started, how it spread and what lessons we can learn. We'd, I would like to see all members of the international community come together in that endeavour. Uh, we need an independent review. It needs to be absolutely rigorous. There can't be any stones left unturned. We need to get the answers so we can stop something like that happening again. Um, and we don't see this at all in, in Cold War mindset, um, but we do think there are some very searching questions to be asked. Equally, this is an important moment of global cooperation. We've had excellent cooperation, I've got to tell you, on coronavirus with the Americans, of course, as a very close ally, but actually also with the Chinese. So whether it's procuring uh, critical personal protective equipment for um, the NHS, or whether it was getting British nationals out of Wuhan province at the outset, I had a good cooperation with my opposite number in China. So we'll take the rough with the smooth, I think is what I'm telling you. Um, we're not going to give up our key interests or our moral values or our principles on Hong Kong, but we also see that there are, there are areas and, and scope for cooperation with China, and we'll pursue those as well. And would you be willing to stick to that, that, that agenda if China demanded that a cost for a, a trade deal would be that you do step back on Hong Kong, that you do accept Huawei into our networks? We wouldn't sacrifice our commitments, the ones I've made in the House of Commons to the people of Hong Kong for a free trade deal with China. Your father received refuge from the UK. Does that personal experience make the, the, the need, the desire to help the people of Hong Kong more than just something that's part of your professional job. My family on my father's side came here and were offered all the huge opportunities that Britain uh, can give anyone in relation to freedom and tolerance but also economic opportunities. Uh, I was talking to Priti Patel, our Home Secretary, about this as well. She feels the same way. Her family came over the time that Idi Amin was expelling um, Indians from Uganda and there are others around the cabinet table and I do think that Britain is at its very best with that big-hearted generosity of spirit that defines our role in the world not just at home um, and we've kind of seen the country coming together uh, with uh, the solidarity people feel towards NHS workers, um, carers, uh, the clap for carers that we've been doing on, on Thursdays and actually there's something about that open-hearted generosity spirit in the world and I do think in relation to Hong Kong uh, with everything that we're seeing about what's going on with our historic responsibilities yes that does strike a personal resonance with me. Isn't that just like a legacy of our superpower status of the past that just doesn't exist anymore and we aren't relevant anymore we're not powerful enough to have a voice? It feels very relevant today and I think Britain still has an incredible role in the world as a force for good. And I think across of those, range, those range of issues, I think there is still, not in a colonial uh, way, we're not, no one seriously thinks that we're going back to that era, but actually Britain is a force for good in a way which matches our interests and our values in the 21st century. You talk tough on China in terms of Hong Kong, but what about our closest ally, the United States? Do you condemn the police violence that we've seen in that country over the last few days against peaceful protesters? Well, look, uh, anyone that saw the footage of the treatment of George Floyd would have been moved and distressed as I was. Um, and I think seeing the protests and the violence uh, is very distressing. I want to see America come together. I don't want to see it ripping itself apart. There's a federal review underway. And of course, that's absolutely right. And you mentioned media freedoms and uh, journalistic freedoms. Of course, uh, the US has a fine tradition of protecting all of those things. And yes, we do expect that to continue.
even when journalists are being beaten up and a British journalist arrested, have you raised that with the US? Well, we will certainly look very carefully at the details of that case. And yes, whether it's in relation to the UK or otherwise, look, we will raise all of those issues in the normal way. A number of Premier League football players have spoken very passionately about the need for racial equality in the wake of the, uh, the George Floyd killing. What do you say to them when the president of our closest ally uses a photo opportunity outside a church to have peaceful protesters blasted out the way. Look, I haven't seen the, um, the scene that you're talking about, but look, when, when we think, even our closest friends, uh, closest partners and countries with which we've got a long history uh, as an ally, of course we'll raise those difficult issues. Um, I probably don't have the same uh, latitude that, uh, that celebrities do, but I do understand, particularly someone like Lewis Hamilton or uh, anyone from the BME community who looks at that and wonders what's the world coming to. Look, I share that sense of uh, distress and of course uh, we want to see America come together. We don't want to see it go back to uh, what we saw in the 60s and some of those tensions. And we'll work with our, um, uh, our closest ally uh, to, to see what more we can do, if anything, to support that process. I mean, when you look at the United States and you see a president that talks about America first, who withdraws from the World Health Organization in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. who rips up the Iran nuclear deal, do you think it's perhaps time for the UK to reassess their status as our most special ally? Actually, I think um, what the British people would expect is that we, uh, of course, nurture our friendships and, ally and alliances around the world, but also stand up for the British national interest. Uh, we made clear that actually we still see that the World Health Organization has a role to play. Yes, we want answers of, about how the coronavirus started, but uh, we don't uh, want to rip up the WHO at a time of a, a global health pandemic. So I think that is a, a good example where we just take a different view and we'll be honest about it. And what do you envisage Britain's role is in, in the world, especially as we come out of this pandemic with so much changed? Well, if you look at the, how we've talked about Global Britain, part of that, of course, is as we leave the EU, forging strong relations and making sure we're good European neighbours with our European partners. Uh, Global Britain is also about us being a force for good in the world. Prime Minister um, is hosting the Gavi Summit tomorrow, uh, which is this summit to get us up to $7.4 billion worth of funding for vaccine development. Um, we're confident that that's going to be a success. Um, we need to bring other countries together in that endeavour. And I think it's a good example of the UK's role bringing countries together as a force for good in the world. And, uh, you know, we're living and breathing it right now. And I think there's a great opportunity for us in the future to expand on that. Thank you very much.